Hi, welcome to Mailbag Monday, where every Monday I open up a bunch of packages sent in by my viewers to my P.O. Box. You never know what you're going to find. So let's get to it. And there's only one way to open packages here in Australia. Let's go. Thank you very much and sorry to unknown person. Um, this obviously came in a, uh, like a satchel or whatever. Um, and it probably didn't have mailbag written on it. So if it doesn't have mailbag written on it, I'm going to assume that it's something I've ordered and I've forgotten about. So I'm just going to open it. So I probably did open this one a while back and went, oh, that's obviously mailbag. And I didn't check it out. So let's, oh, yes. Look at that. Cool. That was. That's not the EEV Log logo. I kind of do have an official EEV Log logo. That's not the official one, but that was one of the submitted um, ones when I did like the logo uh, design. Well, it just wasn't a logo. It's just the name in a font, you know. Um, anyway, oh, we have some. Looks like we have some sort of uh, charger. It's Pearl. Pearl. P I R L charger. Um, what? Oh, and a power brick. With a funny ass Yankee uh, plug on it, absolutely useless. But um, yeah, it looks like it's a it's a USB charger, 2.7 amps per port. Sweet, let's check it out. So this is the Pearl charger, P I R L, and I like the uh, case. Look at this, it's got uh, alloy top and bottom plates, and then inside here is just made up with uh, little individual. Are they laser cut or uh, routed? Are they PCBs or? Uh, Plastic, like fiberglass or plastic. Kind of looks fiber, looks a bit fiberglassy to me. Anyway, there's our board down the bottom, and no, no, it is different. No, they're just like uh, some sort of, you know, Delrin plastic material or something like that. Anyway, it claims to be the um, the world's um, you know, most powerful, fastest, uh, like multi port charger, 2.7 amps uh, per port. Uh, that's genuine on each port delivered all at once um, 50 watts total capability anywhere from uh, 7 to I think 17 volts uh, input so you can power it from like lipo battery packs you could uh, power it from the supplied plug pack which is a mean well they're pretty decent there you go 15 volts 4 amps 50 watts max so we should be able to get the uh, full capability out of this thing little lead for each one is that a multicolor um, and Supposedly like all sorts of, you know, ruggedized, uh, like, you know, full ESD uh, protection on the ports and individual shutdowns. So if you short out one, it won't affect the others and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's rip it apart. Very rugged. I think you can run over that with a car. No wackers. All right, let's get in there. There we go. That all came off. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So I'm not sure what material that is. What do we got down there? That's to keep. Oh, there are the uh, light pipes, of course. There are light pipes going up. That's kind of neat. I love how they've got the uh, individual LEDs on this. None of this, uh, you know, integrated seven segment rubbish. No sorry, Bob. That's very nice, isn't it? Identical uh, channel isolation, big ass inductor there. So this is all going to be uh, switch mode uh, control, of course. So it looks like we have a micro up here. We'll have to get in with the uh, part numbers. ICP uh, port there. Looks like is that uh, the USB um, port chip? Oh, I didn't see a button. Oh yeah, it, it, it has a button. It has a secret reset button. Secret squirrel reset button on the top. There you go. Rev 1.02 for those playing along at home. 11 amps uh, total, like five volts, 11 amps output. Sweet, seven to 17 volts input. So. This looks like, this is really nice design. Really liking this. Uh, oops. Um, <laughs> that was me. That was me. I was trying to uh, like separate this plastic bottom and I had my, I obviously had my uh, uh, thumb on the poor socket here. Let me push that back. Oh no. Oh, it's a Greek tragedy. <laughs> Should be able to solder that back in, but obviously there's no front tabs on this. It's not as rugged as it could be, although of course it's sandwiched. It's sandwiched inside there, so it's you know it's not going to lift up. Didn't use this newfangled surface mount rubbish. You know, it had big through hole tabs in there. Ah, never would have happened. Also, therein lies the problem when you just like uh, put solder paste on these and just reflow them. 
on your pick and place machine. The solder, you kind of sort of get a bit of fillet around the uh, side like that, but you don't get it, you know, right over the top like that, like you get if you hand solder it, and that's going to be more robust. And of course the, uh, the pads, uh, this is like, it's not just a pad and then a thermal relief off to the ground plane. It's actually got, uh, you know, it's right on the ground plane. So that's solid. So that's why we didn't rip the uh, pad off. But the solder joint um, <laughs> certainly failed. And I could, you know, if I got my thumb in there, I could just, you know, lift this entire socket off. So yeah, like it's not going to be a problem on the finished product. This is only if you <laughs> take it apart like me and you dick around with it. Just don't do that. So I am actually uh, concerned about, this is an original one. I haven't actually touched that. And yeah, while there are like, you know, quite reasonable fillets on there, of course it looks uh, you know, a bit frosty, the snowman, because of uh, the fact that uh, you're using lead-free solder. But um, yeah, like all the force plugging in and out these sockets is going on those two pads, the large tabs at the back, plus those four pins. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned about the uh, robustness of the sockets, these surface mount sockets. So here's our power input here. You note that we don't have one large uh, DC to DC converter for the whole lot. Instead, what we've got is a little uh, point of load jobby down here. It's a diode zinc and AP65543 and it's a four amp uh, buck converter. We've got the big ass inductor uh, for that here. We've got a, some output filter and stuff like that. Not sure how tight tight that loop is in there anyway um and then we've got a uh, texas instruments uh three amp uh controller here so yeah no whackers nice thick traces in there bloody black gloss black solder mask should be banned anyway so each channel is absolutely identical it's got a quality uh ti three amp controller it's 2.7 amp uh rated per port this product so the uh, chipset's more than capable and the little uh dc to dc converter's more than capable of well as well, they've got no heat sinky on there. That'd probably be like 90, you know, I do the efficiency curve. We'll have to have a look at the uh, data sheet. I'll include that in if I can over the efficiency of that will uh, change with uh, voltage, of course. And we've got a little uh, AT tiny up there, do we? Just driving our little uh, LED display. So where's our load measurement being done? Is that little uh, instrumentation amp? There, no, there it is. There it is over there. There's our shunt resistor. That's measuring the total power. So they're doing that on the uh, input side. So that, that looks like the uh, total power displayed here is actually the total power, including the uh, efficiency of the uh, DC to DC converter. So that's basically uh, consumption from here. It's not what's actually being delivered, I would presume. Because the only way to measure the uh, power output would be have a uh, shunt resistor over here current shunt and then measure the uh, power on each individual uh, port like that and then add them up in software and give the total but they're getting like near enough maybe they're like in software just uh, subtracting a nominal amount for the uh, efficiency of the converter you know under like 10 percent or eight percent or something like that five percent all right let's power this sucker up found one of those weird ass yankee adapters hey hello zero zero it doesn't look very good unless you diffuse it oh point to five five 0.5 watts, there you go. So it is actually the input. They haven't bothered to uh, subtract the <laughs> quiescent supply there. I'm surprised they're using white. Hmm, doesn't look, it's not that terrific. I'm not, you know, really keen on the implementation there. So it's charging, but like, it's only charging at one, like 1 1.2 watts, like absolutely hopeless. And then the LED's not even coming on. Look at, like it comes on initially, when I plug it in, or it did, before, so much for the world's fastest charger. Yeah, sure, I haven't got one of those stupid Apple phones, but uh, like, come on. Let's see if it heats our TS-80 soldering iron, shall we? It's not so yet, low volt, forget it. Oh, but look, at least it comes with a sticky gel pad. Stick it on the bottom so it doesn't flap around the breeze. But apparently you can just uh, wash these and uh, re-stick. So that's kind of handy to like, you know, stick it under your bench or, you know, mount it vertically like that on a surface or, or something like that. It might support every other bloody charging format. It doesn't support quick charge though. 
All right, let's turn it on. We are at, uh, I think it specifies 5.05 uh, volts on the output or something like that. Uh, so, you know, pretty close, near enough. Um, let's put a one amp load on this thing and see what we get. Yep, one amp, no worries. But look at this, the voltage has jumped up. 5.19 volts. Um, uh, Beulah, that's outside this spec. Uh, like, what's going on? Regulation sucks. So let's actually wind the wick up on this thing and watch that voltage change as we, voltage increases as we increase the current. 1.3. Wow, I'm not sure if this is actually negotiating the current. I think it, uh, I think it does. Whoop, fan's coming on. <laughs> but, um, hey, two point, let's go all the way with LBJ. Let's go to 2.7 amps, can we? Can we? Now it's dropping back down. So it looks like it has a, like a rise and then it comes back to its nominal voltage at 2.7. Is it going to, where's it going to crap itself? Let's have a look. Oi, there we go. No worries. Oop. And it just automatically uh, restarted itself. I didn't uh, turn that off. Oh, there we go. Yep, there's our, there's our overload. We've got a red lead on there. Looks like it's not going to come back on on its own now. Hey, this is interesting. Look. 5 watts, 7 watts, what? What is it? What's going on? As for accuracy there, we're down at, uh, yeah, pretty close to bang on 5 watts there. We're getting 5.1 up here, so that's all right. So it does look like it is uh, compensating because it shows a half when you disconnect this thing. So, yeah, Jeez, flight of the moon on half a watt. So yeah, for me, um, th this is like not if, if, like it's okay. Um, yeah, we're getting our two point seven. We can get our two point seven amps per port, but it doesn't support quick charge, which is uh, useless for me for my mobile phone. So you know your mileage may vary. Of course, I don't know. It's probably okay. The robustness of those USB ports needs to be uh, beefed up, I think, because I reckon if we you know if we really bang this thing in and out, that could be put in some heavy duty stress on those solder joints. And I think it's all going to be mostly, does it have like little plastic um, uh, pins on the bottom that go into the board? But yeah, I don't know. It's okay, but it's not what I was hoping for. Thank you very much, Nick Vassell from uh, Bridgeport in CT. Is that Connecticut? I think it is. Thank you very much. We, uh, it sounds innocent enough what this is, but you never know. You're lucky in the big mailbag. What are we gonna get? Uh, we've got the, um, I keep forgetting the name of this stuff, this crinkly digi key stuff, but hang on. Oh, geez, that smells, that smells vintage. Or is it, no, it smells, it can't, it's not the product. The smell's coming from the packaging material. <laughs> this is not vintage, so I can just tell. Oh, sweet. Vacuum fluorescent dot matrix. Oh, thing of beauty. It's a joy forever. So these displays are very cool. They're iTron uh, displays made in Japan, all the best stuff's made in Japan. And they're designed to be, uh, you know, standard uh, Hitachi LCD interface here, but they're uh, dot matrix VFDs or vacuum fluorescent uh, displays like this. Fantastic. So we've got the uh, 40 by uh, 32 one and, and we've got your more standard one which you might be uh, familiar with, the 16 character by uh, two line displays. So they're supposed to be uh, like fully interface uh, compatible. Unfortunately I have uh, try I've um, sucked out like the wire interface which uh, came with this, put on the pin headers there and I cannot get the thing to work unfortunately. Um, this one is actually drawing uh, 212 milliamps there. So it's drawing about a watt, uh, doing nothing. So they do, you know, they take a lot more than a standard LCD, which is only, you know, a few milliamps, uh, something like that. Oh no, we got one. We actually got it. Check it out, there it is. Let me switch up the studio lights. It might look a bit better. It, what, it wasn't working before. Anyway, we've got some garbled characters. Let me see if I can press reset down here. No, unfortunately, it's not working, which works with the LCD. But um, as you can see, yeah, it does work. So maybe I do need to, uh, you know, 
maybe you do need to tweak the code or something like that, probably tweak the initialization routine or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so not fully in this particular case. Uh, I didn't write the software for this little board. It's a former mailbag. It's a little uh, geocaching thing I've just hacked it into. Uh, normally it uh, powers the five volts from these uh, AAAs here, but of course it doesn't uh, give enough oomph and nope. She's not working, but at least we got something there. So it might be some initialization routine is different or uh, something like that. But anyway, they're very cool. Vacuum fluorescent displays, fantastic. And basically a drop-in replacement for your standard LCD. So if you've got a project and you want it to look a bit funkier in your standard LCD, albeit at uh, a <laughs> like orders of magnitude uh, increased current, is vac Itron vacuum fluorescence, very cool. But if you want to see a video of me hacking around with uh, a vacuum fluorescent display, I highly recommend this one, which I'll link in at the end, where I actually reverse engineer and hack and get working. This, uh, once again, a mailbag vacuum fluorescent display, just driving it with an Arduino compatible board. So I'll link that one in. It's very interesting. It's had like a couple hundred thousand views, I think. Very popular video. Check it out. So I won't go to the effort in this mailbag to get these ones working. It's just, you know, more of the same. And it's just like a probably just a command thing. Anyway, cool, thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Ralph Huber uh, from Wesel in Germany. Wesel, Wesel in Germany. I know all my German viewers, um, contains one electronic device. Not plural, just one. Let's find out what the electronic device is. You never know you're lucky on the big mail bag. Dead, wrapped in plastic. Getting there? Oh, this could be fun. Let's check it out. So thank you very much, Ralph. This is the Octopus Curve Tracer. Um, it, it's very simple. We've just got a uh, op amp here. We've just got a <laughs> some batteries on the top. This is actually a dual N cell holder. So normally for a 1.5 volt battery, but I've actually got uh, the provided the uh, 12 volt batteries fit in here. They're a little bit loosey goosey, but uh, anyway, that generates our plus minus 12 volt rail for our op amp. We've got a function generator input, and of course a, um, a curve tracer used to be something that was um, often found on old uh, analog uh, scopes, you know, like 20 meg entry level analog scopes. A lot of them uh, had the curve tracer built in, which allows you to actually measure the parameters of uh, components using the XY mode of the oscilloscope. And it's basically just a, uh, a function generator through a series uh, shunt resistor, and you're basically just measuring the voltage across a shunt resistor that looks like it down there and uh, you can actually determine on the XY mode of your oscilloscope various parameters of an oscilloscope so let's see if we can get it working unfortunately if I have a look at the note there's a few little issues with this design though so I won't read you the whole lot you can uh, pause that and you can uh, read for yourself but anyway it's basically a uh, the standard result of a function generator if you get like an, an ellipse like a circle on the screen for example then it's a capacitor or inductor an L-shaped curve you've got a diode a straight line like a or depend on the value of the slope uh, you get a resistor vertical lines a short circuit and or a uh, horizontal line is basically open uh, circuit and of course uh, nowadays uh, few oscilloscopes are equipped with the component test that many have a wave gen option so that's the idea of this thing and of course as he said uh, this is nothing new he's not the uh, first to invent this um, but there's various uh, problems with it the 50 ohm output of the function generator yep it's uh, it's too high output impedance uh, to drive you know various uh, components so hence why we've got the uh, op amp on there just to drive it with some uh, low impedance anyway um, uh, but the other problem is that the oscilloscope probes are mains earth reference so you need a differential probe to do it and of course an oscilloscope uh, you can actually use uh, two channels in subtract mode which then becomes a differential you know a poor man's uh, differential probe it's pretty good for lots of cases and stuff like that unfortunately you can't combine as far as I'm aware, I don't know of any scope where you can combine XY mode, like even with a four channel scope XY mode and have the X be the X channel be the subtraction of the uh, two channels. So differential probe, differential probe, XY. They're all mains earth reference, as far as I know anyway. Hmm, could be wrong. 
All right, so what I've done is hooked up a uh, differential probe here. Unfortunately, this is like a high voltage differential probe, not optimized for low voltage uh, stuff. So it's uh, times 10 uh, attenuation, but then again, we're using a times 10 um, scope probe as well. Anyway, it'll do the business. And uh, so I've got the differential probe across the uh, component under test, which is uh, these two leads here. And then the scope channel uh, goes across from ground, which is the Y terminal across the uh, little tiny current uh, shunt resistor in there don't know what value that is you know probably like a you know 10 ohms 100 ohms something like that and ta-da we're measuring a capacitor just 100 and capacitor and we get ourselves a circle of course i'm using the uh function generator just generating a one kilohertz uh signal so the good thing about this is that you can actually test the component at the frequency you want so you could actually you know go up to uh you know 20 megahertz here if you really wanted to you know you could go all the way with lbj and things are going to whoop whoop there we go so we still have our circle but now we're starting to distort look at that because i think our amplitude we'll probably find our amplitude is yep once you get to a certain point your amplitude becomes too much and you're going to saturate like that you're not going to get your circle anymore so a little trap for young players but anyway a capacitor will give a circle and if we change out a capacitor there's our open circuit, so we get our horizontal line. Now, if we clip our resistor on there, get a sloping line like that. And that's exactly what we get. So it's a resistor because they're linear. And what do we get? A linear line. Oh. And of course, if we go to a non-linear component, it doesn't get any more non-linear than a diode. Or does it? Which is the most non-linear component? Anyway, there we go. We get our traditional... Um, whoop. There we go. We get our traditional L shape. So uh, there you go. I won't go into all the details of uh, component testers, but yeah, like a real simple do-it-yourself component tester. You can make it uh, yourself. You know, there's no need to. I don't even know if he hasn't linked in. Don't even know if he sells a uh, kit or whatnot. But it's basically just a uh, low impedance uh, function gen uh, output, just knob amp. There, you can do it without it, but it's just not as uh, sensitive. But anyway, component convert your um, scope into a component tester neat anyway if you do know of an oscilloscope that actually does allow that like a four you'd need a four channel one that allows you to actually do xy mode with the subtraction of one minus two and uh, three minus four let us know in the comments because that'd be awesome like that offhand i don't know if there's one that does it and in theory it should be able to do it with these newfangled digital scopes because it's it's just really essentially just a software function. What the heck, we'll just open up a couple of bonus um, China eBay ones. <laughs> a lot of people just buy just random like $2 stuff delivered on eBay. Uh, Australian Capital Territory 2153. It's a phone accessory. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. This could be bad. What have we got? What is that? What is that? What is that? I, I don't know what that is. It's like a, that's a, like a mobile phone, like cover or something. I don't, and like, you know, like a, there's that, like the lens, that's the lens for the, like the lead that lights up. That's the aperture, you know, that's the uh, cutout for the camera that goes in there. It's like, it's a phone. Um, have I, this, why would somebody send me this? I don't know, a new phone adapter thing. I don't get it. Okay. Um, the plastic toy gift. Doesn't get much better than Australian Capital Territory again from the same mob. So they couldn't send it in the same packet. And <laughs> this is like, you know, a dollar delivered plastic toy gift. What have we got? Not condoms. A finger condom. Just what I always wanted. Thank you very much. Medical level. Oh, yeah, you've got to trust the medical level finger condom. All right, let's have a look. Ta-da. Sealed for our protection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, got it. Oh, greasy as. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you might as well go all the way with LBJ. You can't be too sure these days. Catch you next time. <laughs> Ooh, peppermint flavoured.
Hope you enjoyed Mailbag Monday. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. And you can subscribe by clicking down here. Make sure you uh, also click on the bell notification icon so that YouTube actually notifies you of new videos. Speaking of which, uh, videos you can watch over here and over here, just random ones, maybe another mailbag. Who knows? It's a lucky dip. As always, you can leave comments down below or on the EEV blog forum, which is a much better place to discuss them. I try and read and respond to uh, comments where possible, particularly in the... Uh, uh, hours after I release a video and as always you can uh, support me uh, down below on Patreon, PayPal, donations, crypto, merch, products, all that sort of crap I'm shilling, you know, whatever. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. Hello.